Tuesday. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, we are going to continue on the silk shading. This is for the Your Sweet Embroidery of the Month pattern. So more silk shading tonight. We're working on that little strawberry tonight. Uh, so thanks so much for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour, and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, thanks again so much for joining me. We are working, here's the finished one, on the Your Sweet pattern. We are learning how to silk shade. I'll show you this when we flip around so it's not, not in reverse. So we've already finished this week the little peach. We finished him last night and we're gonna just stitch the strawberry right next to him. Uh, there's not enough time to do all of the text. So we're just, I'm, I'm actually happy that we're doing the strawberry. The peach uh, went a little faster than I thought it would. So we're gonna do the little strawberry next to it and they're gonna be just happy friends. Um, so we'll get going. We got it We got it started. We got the line work down and now we're gonna start the silk shading process. Uh, be sure to check out the last videos if you want to uh, learn how to do this technique. I promise you, you'll be able to do it. Uh, it's fun. It's time consuming, but it is fun to get something to look, uh, embroidery to look almost as it's, as it's been painted. It's, it's just exciting to do. I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, the bundle for this is available at penguinandfish.com. If you want to check that out, all the colors of floss, uh, the fabric and needles and pattern are included in that. So thank you very much uh, for everyone who's gotten that. And uh, all right, let's get going, everyone. Okay, got the pattern all laid out here still. So uh, if you wanted to see the finished one again, here we go go. So this is what it looks like done with all the text and everything, everything in there. Uh, the text also has like this ombre effect where it changes color throughout and that's done uh, with the blending of the silk shading as well. So tonight we are going to get cracking on this little guy. I think we'll get pretty far on him. I think we'll at least get the center filled. Uh, so here's here's where we are with him. We have outlined outlined uh, him with uh, the two colors. It's a little hard to tell, but we got red, and then we got this pink up here, and we've parked both of our needles. So we're actually stitching with two needles, not at the same time. One's just hanging out uh, until we need it. Uh, so the next step is we are going to stitch our directional lines. We're going to do it exactly how we did uh, with with the peach. So I saw some of your um, I saw some of your uh, peaches posted in the penguin and fish crafters group, and they're looking so cute, you guys. Uh, Lynn, I am not going to be, Lynn's wondering when we'll stitch the text for this project. So, uh, because I'm only doing the embroidery of the month, uh, this week, I'm not actually going to do the text, but it is the same, same process. So these thin lines are that split stitch. Uh, I've been doing that back split stitch, um, and that's what we've done for all of these these outlines. That's all this is. And then once you start here, it is ex the exact same thing as our silk shading. We're just going in the direction of our our lines and gradually curving around, and uh, uh, we cross over in the center there. So so here you go. You got your directional lines, and the dotted line is where you start blending the different colors together. So that is the text. I won't be doing that for uh, this this uh, week at least. Um, I'll have to come back and maybe do that some other time. Uh, so, all right, you guys, we're going to do this red. So I've parked it. To unpark it, I'm just going to go back in the same hole that I came out of. There we go. And now I'm ready to work on it again. It would be fun to do some type though. Um, 
All right, I'm gonna just stitch some directional lines. So I, I drew a couple in here. I'm gonna use those as a guide and I'm gonna just gradually one at a time kind of go from the center and then cross over the outside some of these directional lines. And I'm just using them as a guide. We'll do some short ones and long ones. I would like to do more text though. I don't know, how do you guys feel about text? I think it would be fun to do like a whole, like how to stitch. We could do text in a, in a whole pile of different ways. I think that might be kind of a fun, fun project one of these times. But yeah, the text for this in particular is the exact same process as what we did with, with the peach and what we're doing now. I've out, I outlined the bigger shapes with um, these smaller, uh, with the, the chain stitch here, or not the chain stitch, the split stitch. And uh, then I fill it in like how I'm, how I'm doing now with the directional lines first and then going back through. Uh, Robin, I am using one strand. So this whole project I did with one strand, which is tiny. <laughs> like all the, all those stitches feel really tiny, but they're also really pretty when you stitch with just one strand. Everything just is a little silkier. Uh, they, they just, uh, lay nicer next to each other because, um, there's no twisting really. Uh, you do have the subtle twist because even a single strand is made up of a couple strands that have been twisted tightly together, but it's not like when you have several of the six strand embroidery floss where the, the twist is really apparent. Um, we're kind of eliminating that, which um, I'm gonna go right on the outside of this. Uh, which is making everything just lay next to each other in a nice silky way. All right, you guys, we have our directional lines for the red. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and start filling those in. I mean, we could do the directional lines right away for the, the pink. It's sitting up there, but I, I don't think we have to. I think we can just start doing some short and long stitches in here. So I'm just going to go down the edge right next to what I have. Uh, we'll be doing some long ones. We're going to get way into uh, our second color area with some of our lines. That's going to help our blending, those big moments in there. I also think I might have to do a couple rows of this red just because if I make a stitch all the way up that high, that might be a little bit much maybe. So We'll do a couple rows, I think. We'll start start here. So again, I'm just kind of varying the start and stop points. So I do have that um, short and long stitch going. That'll, that um, varying the top and bottom point will make it blend a bit better. And I'm using my directional lines that I stitched as a guide, because I need to, you know, I need to slightly shift uh, the, the thread each time. So it's going around and around. So it's actually kind of, you know, the stitches are a bit tighter at the top than they are at the bottom, but that's why it's nice that we've stitched this outline. Cause even if I have a, like a teeny gap on the bottom, uh, because I'm changing directions, it will, uh, I, you, you be able to have that edge filled in with the, the stitch, the split stitch. All right, I am going to stitch down here. Ooh, uh, Christy says she's finished the peach and is working on the leaves. Yay. So the leaves I did with just satin stitch. All right, and I'm going to uh, fill in this little gap here that I kind of left. It's okay if you go ahead a little bit and then uh, um, come back. Like if I didn't, you know, if it's too big of a 
like if, if it goes from here to here, my direction aligns and I'm like, yeah, I need, I need one in the middle just to help me out. You can go ahead and put that in the middle and then you can always come back with, with more stitches. Let's do a really long one up here. And I'm gonna need some new thread soon. I'm almost out of this red already. We need a long one up here too. That's a pretty big gap there. We'll fill that in with the second row of red, I think. All right, let's go in the middle of these two again with kind of a long one. And then we'll go back through all of these, um, back on top of these to put in the cute little seeds. We have little white seeds and um, his little face. That'll be fun to do those. I suspect we'll get to those tomorrow. All right, this might be my last stitch with this, this thread. Eh, I, might get, I might be able to get one more. All right, let's, let's do a short one. Just because I know I'm going to come around again with this red. But yeah, the more varying of the starting points, I think the more blendy you'll get in. Now I'm, now I'm getting low on the thread. Let's do one like kind of shorty directional line here in the middle of these two. Oh yeah, I need to change thread. There we go. So I'm gonna come up in my shape and we'll do those little two little stitches that cross over and that's gonna lock, kind of lock my thread in place. And boop. So Jocelyn, this is actually still just the cotton embroidery floss. Um, I'm not using silk, silk thread, although that would be amazing, I think, for this. It'd be just super shiny. I, I haven't, I don't actually have any silk thread, but that would be fun to try. Silk shading is just uh, the name of the technique. Um, it's also called thread painting or needle painting. There we go, get the second strand. So I'm not actually using uh, silk threads. It's still, it's still just the cotton embroidery floss. Just the six strand cotton embroidery floss. All right, we got our second thread. Let's tie it in a knot here. Okay. Next up, more red. We'll just pop it in there. So this is our kind of special way of starting and stopping our thread when we do the silk shading. It's, it's we're coming from the front and then making our little plus sign to hold it in. And I suspect the whole reason for it being done this way is because I never actually have to flip over to the back of my, my piece. I can always just stay on the front um, you know, I'm tying these knots and there's a little bit of thread in the back. I'm going to be stitching so much that I will be stitching over some of those back threads and kind of locking the threads in place. And that little X is going to hold it there and, and we're going to be stitching right over it. So, um, it'll be hidden ultimately. So I'm not worried about that. Even if it's a different color, it'll be hid underneath there. Let's, let's do a long one. I'll definitely need a second layer of red in some of the points. Okay, I'm gonna put one right in the middle here because this is a pretty big transition of angles. And then we'll fill it in. It's going pretty fast. So I am, this is a very small design. So I, I on purpose uh, made all the elements in this design in this embroider of the month 
small, itty bitty, so you could try out um, the thread painting or the, the silk shading technique without it getting too overwhelming. Uh, I know with um, a couple, like if you uh, had a bigger thing, it would, it would just take ages. So just so you guys know, uh, when I stitched the sample, uh, I think I stitched this, it took about 20 hours to stitch. <laughs> uh, and pretty hardcore, like not much stopping during, during that time. So, um, it takes a little, a little bit of time to do this compared to, here's the Here's the um, non, this is the same pattern, uh, but stitched just with some chain stitches, some back stitches. So just another way you could do the pattern. And there's, there's directions on how to do this in the, the, uh, in the digital file, the digital pattern as well. So if you didn't want to do, if you like the design but didn't want to go all out with the silk shading, uh, you can do the other way. And there are instructions for that, for that. Too, but this one, by contrast, was about four hours. <laughs> so this is a four hours. This is uh, getting close to twenty hours worth worth of work. So <laughs> there is some difference there. Um, you know, we are on day four of working on this. So this was a good at least three solid hours, and. Um, you know, we're adding another hour tonight with this one. So we're going to basically surpass today how long it took to do the entirety of the other one. But it's fun. This is, it's definitely exciting to see the shape develop, to see the, the blending develop. Um, I, I'm having a good time playing around with this, with this technique. And it might be one of those things that you try. This is what I love about just learning new techniques and playing with, you know, new crafts and stuff. Like this might be something you try and uh, never done before. And you might think, man, not for me, but now I know how to do it. Moving on. Or you might, might do it and realize, oh my God, this is it. This is like my craft. I connect with it. I love it. And, uh, um, I'm, I want to do a, a more. I want to do tons more. So you never know, I, I think, when that craft will kind of hit you or when you connect with something. So that's what I kind of love about, you know, doing the show with you guys, that I that I get to play around and try new things and, and all that. So um, it's awesome that some of you guys are trying trying this out. Because we usually do our little fun, quick designs that we can do the whole thing in the week. <laughs> oh, that's true. So Nolene has a good suggestion. Just suggestion. She says um, you could thread paint the fruit, like what we're doing here, and then you could do the um, typical embroidery for the words. So you could do the Your Sweet um like this, this is just, uh, this is chain stitched on the big, the big parts of the word, like two rows of chain stitch and back stitch on the rest of the words. You could just do that and then fill in these two guys with uh, the silk shading. That would be a fun, a fun way to do, to get it done. That's a good idea. I like that. I love the idea of blending styles and techniques in the same piece too. All right, I think we're almost up to the top here. I think it goes all the way up in here, this this red. I'll do a short one here. I'm trying to also cover up my, my um, split stitches on the outside here. I think that that looks pretty good. So that's our first layer of color. Um, I think I am going to just um, up here. I think we're pretty good, like up up there with um, 
where the red is, but down here, uh, we need another another layer. And I, and I am gonna put a few more stitches up top just to fill it in a little. So for, for the second row, I'm gonna come up uh, within the stitches a little bit and go upward. You can kind of run your needle up. You can kind of run your needle up um, at the angle and kind of just stop where you wanna be. And then hopefully it'll be going at the same angle as, as some of your other bits. So I'm just gonna come up down into the loss and uh, uh, put stitches wherever I think they're needed. And we definitely need to fill up the area down here a little bit. So it might look like I'm going pretty far into uh, this area that's going to be pink, but that's where um, me going far into it every once in a while, that's what's going to get this nice blended, blended look. All right, we need to get a bunch more down here. Oh, Robin, I bet you it still, I bet you it still looks nice. Peaches should be a little lumpy, right? I bet you it looks awesome. Oh, cool. So Kathy, Kathy says that's, that's what she's doing. She's, um, I think, uh, going to thread paint and, um, do text for the rest. Is that what you're saying? Let's see. Following the basic instructions for the words. Oh, because I didn't realize that thread painting was not that washable. You could, um, I think, I think the thread painting is going to hold up in the wash. Uh, it's not going to look as perfect and satiny, but I don't think it's going to lose that much. But I, but that's a good idea, just doing the the words. Um, the words with, like, normal embroidery. I think that's a good solution. It's definitely a good solution to get it done a bit faster. All right, there's one little, I'm gonna fill in this little area down here. I don't like how that made a little gap. There we go. Yep, that feels good. Okay, so it still looks like I need something in the middle here. Oh, and I'm almost out of thread again. So, you know, I think I'm gonna park this even though I only have like a couple stitches worth less or left. Okay. I parked it way up here, which, uh, you don't owe it. If you can park it, um, by pulling it out within the shape, that's what I should have done, uh, versus coming up here. Because if I don't go back right in the exact hole, then I'll have like a weird little stitch hanging up out here. Whereas if that happens down here, I'll be able to cover it up later. Um, but I wanted to just, I'm just going to switch over. And um, start this pink. So I think I think I might do some. Eh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do it where I come up. I'm gonna keep doing it where I come up from from this side in the middle. And now I'm switching colors though, and we are gonna travel up, and we'll probably get a couple rows of this pink as well. Ooh, it's gonna blend. I'm gonna start off with um, some directional lines again, just kind of following. This one's gonna, I'm gonna go over the edge. Following the red stitches. That'll help me get started. I think this is gonna look pretty fun. We'll get way down in here. go up to about there. Ooh, this pink is going to look cute. It's just going to look like it just got touched by a, a little light on top. So it is pretty subtle. Um, but I think uh, it's subtle in the way that this dark edge uh, to the middle here 
is subtle. It's just going to be just enough. All right, so I think that's that's a decent start there. Um, hopefully you guys can tell the different colors there. I'm gonna start filling it in. And I have that red parked up here in case I do need to add a little stitch here and there if, if I need to fill in a gap or something. Pile of baby stitches. So again, I'm going to try and vary my start and stop point. Like if I do a really long one, um, that'll help make it look more blendy. So this is kind of a long one. There we go. We're just going left to right. Oh, <laughs> Catherine says on Facebook that watching this is just mesmerizing. Yeah, I've noticed that like watching crafting is almost as relaxing as, as doing the crafts. That's kind of fun. Eh, let's, let's do a shorter one. This is kind of long right here. We'll do a long one down here. We have to do a second row in some of these spots it looks like. Ooh, but we're starting to get that kind of blendy effect which is cool. I'm gonna actually go and do that second row right while I'm in this space still. Just kind of filling it in. And I am going to need some more pink thread soon, some more pink floss. Let's get a long one here. Looks like it needs it. We'll go all the way to the top. And then I think we'll get another second row one in here. I think a little lower. How about there? It's getting there. It's looking kind of cute. I think I need to get some more stitches on this edge here. It's kind of looking a little flat there. We'll do that with the next thread though. I'm going to be out of this real soon. Oops, that kind of crossed over a little bit. That's okay. Just kind of getting some more directional lines in here, and now let's let's fill in the gaps. Ooh, I think that's it for this thread, though. I'm gonna grab, eh, one more, one more right here. Oh, can I get one more? Uh, I think I better stop. I'm gonna put a little X in um, the strawberry top right here. And we'll get some more pink. Definitely not quite enough to finish this. All right, let's, let's do it. I need to do some, I think, bigger stitches like down into here a little bit more. It's looking a little bandy, like a like a thick pink and then a thick red, I need to get some longer stitches in there to start blending it. And I might bring back this red to help me, but I'm going to get the base of this pink in first. So let's get another thread. Zoop. Yeah, so if you're seeing that it's kind of banding, like it looks like a big bar and another big bar, just throw in some longer 
or some not necessarily longer, but stitches that bleed into that that cross over into the other color a little bit more. A few of those, and then I think it'll help pull the whole thing together. It'll make the gradient from one color to the next just look like it took a longer time, and that's that's kind of what we're going for. Okay, let's start over here. But yeah, I have a couple spots where it looks like it get a little longer and, and get more of that red in. It's coming along though. I'm just trying to fill in all those little gaps and um, yeah, let's let's bring in some of those long stitches now. I'm trying to follow follow the angle of the line still. There we go, that's nice. Now let's do a shorter one. All right, now I'm gonna get some longer ones down here, I think. We want this to blend together a little bit more. Oh, that's already better. Just that one stitch, I think, made that a little bit better. This might be a little subtle for camera, but I'll take a photo when we're done again so you guys can see if you can't quite see here. But yeah, see how I'm getting going way down into this red, like way far down in here, farther down than you'd think for, for the pink, but just a few extra stitches uh, bleeding down into there is gonna help this blend, and I can definitely tell that it, it's, it's working. There, I kind of think that's looking pretty nice. I do want to shape this a little bit more. I think I need one more stitch up here just to make this look more rounded. Just needs one more stitch, I think. There, I actually think just that single stitch helped a bit there. All right, and I don't think I need to bring in any more red. I could put like maybe one right there, so I'll show you um, let's just park this for a moment and um, let's bring this red back in. So I'm going to go in that same hole. There we go. And I think right here is where I'm thinking. It's looking pretty densely pink right here. I want to bleed my red up into, into that shape a little bit more. Oh, there. That helped it a little bit. Just that one stitch, I think, really, really helped it. See, that's all. That's all I need. That's why you have your um, your thread parked on hand. I just needed one more stitch. Okay, I'm gonna go over. I'm I'm gonna end these stitches now. I think we have this little area finished. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the little leafies. All right. Pop this guy up here done with that needle. Let's do the same for this. Let's do our little cross here. And we're going to go over all of these baby stitches here, all these little cross stitches with, um, with the next color. All right. Let's trim these down and start up the next color. I think I'll just trim all these uh, starter bits when I'm done. All right, there we go though. You can see some of that blending of the pink and red. It's gonna look really cute when we get the little speckled um, seeds and stuff in there though. Here's the original one um, with the little French knot eyes. I think that'll be just really sweet. So now we're gonna do the top of the strawberry and there's two colors it's pretty subtle but we got the tips are that lighter color that that uh, lime green that 
that lime peel is the name of the color. And then fresh basil is that darker one that's right underneath. Um, so I think let's start with, um, I think we'll start with the little green top or the, um, the lime peel tops. So I'm going to get a strand of that. And we'll start with our chain stitch, not our chain stitch, our split stitch that I'm doing a, um, that back stitch that's splitting, splitting the stitch. So it's like a reverse split stitch. So I'll show you that again. We really actually don't need to do much as far as a split stitch. It's just basically a couple little baby stitches and we'll, um, We'll get the green, the, the other green, the fresh basil, the darker green going right away as well. So we can get all of our stitches in um, right away. I think that worked well for the red part of this, the red and pink, doing it both at the same time. So let's do that. All right, I'm starting with the little green tops, the, uh, the light green tops. And I'm going to stab my last stitch here. That'll make it look like it's a split stitch, but I'm actually doing it in a reverse sort of way. I can just barely see my pencil lines on here. The nice thing about pencil lines is that, you know, the, they'll kind of go away a little bit over time. Um, but I didn't want it to go away quite yet. Ooh, I think I have a knot here. Oh yeah, okay. Gotta turn it around. Wow, okay, so this is the first time I've had to do this tonight, or at all during this project. So I had a little, little knot in the back. Okay, back in business. Stabbing that bit. All right, I'm gonna go to the next, next little top, a little point. I think we can just do this in one kind of stitch. Okay, next up, these just seem like one stitch sort of guys too. This is pretty small. This will still help us define the edge and um, give it a little bit of height too by having these stitches, even if it's just like one little stitch versus the split stitch. <laughs> They're cute little toppers here. All right, and I am going to park this uh, in a moment here and we'll, we'll get the second color going right away so we can get that outline in. Not much to outline with that, but we'll still do it. Okay, and I'm gonna park on the outside again. Um, actually, in that same hole, it looks like that's a little bit bigger, just because there's not much of a spot to park within a shape anymore. So we're gonna just go up there. Okay, let's get the fresh basil color. And get our second needle going. Oh, Gretchen says her strawberry looks much fuller. Oh, that's cool. So it almost has like a curve to it. 
All right. Next color. Oops, I keep almost pulled it out of the needle there. Okay, we'll pop down here again. All right, let's let's start over here. I think we'll just kind of go down in here and then the trick is we'll have to split this one a little bit. Oh, there we go. All right. Got that little uh, subtle color shift in there. I think for these middle ones, I'm just going to come up and split that other color just a hair. Same thing over here. This is working well. All right, next up, I am going to do the directional lines using the lime green. That's the, the lime peel. The, that's the lighter green at the top. We'll get those uh, angles so they're coming off of like each point. And then we will start filling it in. That shouldn't take too long, I don't think. And then we'll, we'll come back with this darker green. It'll be just like an itty bitty subtle shift in the color. <laughs> I know, so, um, Gretchen is saying, I love how British people say strawberry, random thought, and now, uh, now they need someone to hear it. I don't know how, how it would be. Would it be like a strawberry? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to get a good accent. Uh, the peach stem, I used uh, the the bottom color here, which is that California poppy. It's that, that darker orange. You could actually do it with the red. I think that'd be really pretty too. But I used the California poppy strawberry. <laughs> That's how I suspect in my head. That's in my head how someone would say strawberry. Strawberry. All right, last stitch here before we park. Cute. Coming along. Jeez, just with just the little outlines. Again, I was thinking this last night too with the leaves. If I didn't put these little um, X's in there. This would be cute. Just that filled in and then the outlines, uh, just staying as outlines, not being filled in. I think that'd be kind of fun. All right, let's park, park this stitch, park this needle. We'll go over here. Boop. All right. And back through the same hole, kind of release this. All right. Oh, okay. Noeline's uh, sounding it out. So strawberry. <laughs> How about like that? Uh, okay. I'm going to put a little directional line stitches. I'm going to just go from kind of the center out to the point of each of these. And I think that's going to be fine for my directional lines. I'm still gonna go like short and long stitches. Like by that I mean like I'm gonna vary vary the lengths of them still. We don't need too many of these. We just want that suggestion of a little lighter tips to these. But these are, are good uh, for directional lines, I think, for sure. Okay, we got our start. Let's, uh, let's fill it in now. I'm going to do some long ones and some shorter ones. I'm going to go over that outer edge, too. And we really don't need much here, it looks like. 
again, the benefit of uh, working on a small design. Doesn't take that many stitches. Uh oh. Another little knot. This is wanting to knot up a little today. I think I need one more in here. Right there. All right, I think that's our first little guy. Let's keep going. I'm kind of over, I'm putting more stitches in in these little tops, like further down than I'm expecting. But I think, um, you know, I'll be kind of countering that with the darker green once I start doing that. Getting a few more stitches in here, loading it up. Gosh, I feel like I have another knot in here. It's, I think it's actually in the same spot it's it's going. So maybe I should have, um, could have tried thread conditioning this a little bit. Huh. Haven't had to go to the back at all this whole entire time stitching this entire um, peach and everything, really, except for, you know, like the satin stitch. And now I'm having to go to the back a lot. Ugh. Oh. See, again, the same spot. Well, you know what? Maybe we do try that thread conditioner right now. See if that helps. Ooh, and I, I lost my needle. Let's, let's do that. Uh, we talked about thread conditioner a little bit yesterday um, and why I'm not using it, and it's just because I didn't think of it. I didn't, um, haven't tried that with silk shading, so let's just run our single thread through here and see if that helps um, all our little tangles. It's just a little twisted too much a little bit. There, Ooh, and it smells good. This is the Wise Craft. Um, this is the Huga flavor. Um, it smells kind of like fresh pears a little bit. All right, so let's give that a go. Already it looks like a lot of the like squiggles in the thread have kind of gone away, so I think this is a good idea. Oh, yeah, I can kind of feel like there's a little fuzzle or something there. All right, I think I think that's good for now. We'll come back with more stitches if we need them later. It's hard to tell. I really do. It would help having that magnifying glass for sure. <laughs> help me with these baby stitches. There. They're a little bit smaller on this side, so let's just catch this last uh, last two with a few stitches. I have a feeling we'll come back with this color again to to touch up once we get the second green in there. That's the fun. I can just park it for a little bit and come back later. So it's not, um, it hasn't done that knot again. So this is, uh, I think that's a win. Uh, it seems to be working doing um, that thread conditioner on here, so that's great. All right, let's 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 park it again. I think it's time to switch to the next bit, give that a go. All right, gonna go back in the same hole here. There we go, freeing up that thread. And uh, okay, let's do this dark green. So I'm gonna come up within stitches that I already Done. Let's do some um, directional stitches here. Come on, there we go. So I'm coming up within that lime green. If this gets all tangly, then, then I'll do some thread conditioner here too. And I'm going right to the baseline, right where it connects with this pink.
I'm going in like the same holes as that pink. If you're going in the same direction, like if all your stitches are just going vertically, like just upwards, you probably don't need to do this extra um, directional line thing, but um, it is helpful if you do have to switch directions a lot, like how I'm having to do for, for this project. Oh, Luann said that this is the one that um, she didn't have anymore. Uh, so this is from Wisecraft Handmade. Here's her website on the back there. And uh, I know she's in the middle of a move, so um, maybe she's just doesn't have them in stock right now because she's, she's moving. But uh, the, the two other flavors, um, the Rainfall and I think Earl Grey is the second flavor. They're all so yummy. So you won't, you won't lose by doing... Um, one of the other scents. Oh, this is so little. All I'm really trying to do is cover up the the um, white at this point, the fabric at this point. Filling in the shape. I am still trying to go on the outside of my split stitch line, but if I miss, then I'm not worrying about it too much. And still trying to do my short and longs in here. Just to very, very my starting point. Ooh, it's looking so cute. It's so subtle. It's just a little, little top of green, the lighter green. That's what's so fun with the thread painting. You can be, do like all those little subtle moves. Oh, thanks, Kathy. So Kathy over on YouTube is saying that she likes the Northern uh, Cardinal color. Yeah, it's a really pretty red. I, I do love, love that red. It's just a bright, bright, juicy red. Oh, it's coming along. We're totally going to get all of the satin or the um, silk shading done tonight. That's exciting. So tomorrow we'll put on his little face and we'll, uh, put on all the little seeds and we'll be doing that that like Kleenex that tissue paper technique again how we did how we did the face over here I think that worked super duper well um, for getting the positioning just right of of the shapes so we'll do that again and I'd still like to write like hi friend up up here or something or maybe he says you're sweet up there too that that could be cute. Two little happy fellers. Oh, this is, I, I'm really liking just these itty bitty light tips on this. I just think it's so subtle and, uh, and sweet. Like you almost miss it. Um, but it's one of those subtle things that just make it a hair more real looking. Pretty. These two colors, these greens look so nice next to each other too. Oh, Bunny, I, I'm happy. Uh, Bunny on Facebook says she likes this thread painting. It is so fun. I still can't believe how people do like the really big ones or, you know, I keep coming back to the kitty portraits. I know um, I've seen people do like cat portraits before that it just look so real or dog portraits. And I'm just thinking those had to take 
so many hours, so many hours, and such, like, talent by those people, too. It's just really fun. Oh, yes, Bunny, so we have been working on this for the past, um, this is day four, so on Monday's video, I, uh, I started out, and, um, there's some different techniques that, that I usually use, or then I usually use, um, in my more, um, beginner embroideries, so it's a fun, it's fun to do, uh, something a little different here. Little fun, and the nice thing is that you really—I know I, I mentioned this uh, yesterday—but you could really, you can really take almost any embroidery design, just fill it in with thread painting instead of um, just outlining it. You know, so if you have a favorite embroidery design, try um, uh, filling it in with with color instead. That might be a fun, fun thing to do. Okay, I think we're done, and I don't think I need to go back with the other green at all. I think we're done. That is looking cute. Ooh, look at that little extra green on the edge. I love it. Ooh, it is cute. Oh, I kind of just like these as fruit without the faces, but we're going to put all the faces back on. And I'm pretty excited for his little, his little white seeds here. So here's, here's the finished one, um, from, uh, my original here. So we got his face and all those little cute little specks yet. But I, I really like how this one turned out. Ugh, it's sweet. So since I don't have any more kind of places to put that little cross to end the floss, now I am going to weave in the ends a bit. Look at it from the back. It looks pretty nice too. This would actually probably work really well for a tea towel, uh, just because the back looks, looks nice too. I mean, we do have the little, all the little fuzzles, but you can probably trim those. I do have to get that second needle and let's pop all these guys off right away too. These are all my starting and ending knots. We can just snip all those knots away. I could actually probably trim them from the back and pop these off probably a little bit easier, but it's fun to do from the front. Okay, so we'll pull, oh, there's a little knot there. We'll pull these to the back. I don't want to cut my fabric either. So let's pop all these up. There we go. And I'm just going to give those a little bit of a trim too. There, I think, I think that'll do. And uh, let's weave in this end as well to finish it up. So let's go back through that same hole. Didn't need you, sir. Okay, and weave in uh, back and forth three times here too to just kind of lock it in. Yay, I'm excited. I'm actually really having fun stitching with just the single strand of floss. It just feels... I feel like I'm doing something fancy <laughs> by just doing the one like little delicate thread of of um, single strand of floss there. I'm gonna these guys are bothering me. They're gonna get a little haircut. There. All right, let's check it out for the evening. Ah, it's coming along. Ooh, that's just, uh, I love these little green tips. I think those, that's my favorite part. That might be my favorite part of this whole thing is it's little bitty green tips. But I think this pink to the red is looking good. We helped it out with those longer stitches for sure in that blend. And um, it's going to be fun to put his little face on tomorrow. I'm excited. All right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. Let's Let's finish this up there hello oh gretchen is saying that the faces are the the signature touch so i do i do like a happy little guy <laughs> so all right here it is i'm just gonna stretch the just gonna pull on the um hoop a little bit tighten that fabric it um just for me handling it it looked like it had a little bump there uh that's just um for my fingers i just pulled pulled the fabric a little bit more and it's back um, that's gone and it's nice and taut again but yeah so here we go
there you can see the little subtle change of the pink, I think, a little bit better here. The little tips. Ugh, fun. But yeah, here's how big it is. It's this big. It's teeny tiny. Teeny, 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 tiny. But look how cute they are together. Ugh. All right, I'm having, I'm having a little too much fun doing this, I think. All right, so tomorrow we'll get his little face on. Uh, the little seeds. I think that's a neat little subtle detail. And I think they need to talk to each other. So we're going to put like a little, maybe a little speech bubble uh, with some text in there. And I think that that'd be a nice way to finish this up. We could actually, um, I have a small... I broke it just now, but I do have a small embroidery hoop. It could be cute in like a little a little hoop like this, maybe. That'd be a fun way to display it, or I don't know. Uh, let me know if you think about uh, a different way I could do this. It'd be cute as like a little pin, too. Uh, we could stitch it to a piece of felt, maybe. Um, I don't know. We'll have to think about that, uh, how to finish this off. But awesome, you guys. Thanks again for sharing your process of working on this over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. It's so fun to see see how they're coming along. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. We will uh, finish this feller up. Uh, the, again, the bundle and the, the kit. Uh, the kit and the pattern are available at penguinandfish.com uh, just till the end of the month. So that's like 10 days away. <laughs> And then we're done with uh, done with August already. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks again. Have a great uh, rest of your evening. Good night. <laughs>